Recording. All right. So geometry is something that often people are a little intimidated by. Uh, give me the thumbs up sideways down for geometry. Yeah, it's in the middle. So it's here, it's here, it's here. Some's, like, some's here. It's okay. Now, it can be kind of boring if all we're doing is on pieces of paper, like drawing circles, drawing lines, and all this, right? So I want to try to make it more engaging. Does anybody know what this is? What is this? Compass. Okay. What do you use a compass for? Tell your direction. So you even have it on your phone, right? You have it on your phone where you can do it so you know which way is north, right? All right. We're going to do uh, experiments outdoors. Uh, once you have the vocab down, I'm going to spend some time teaching you how to use this. And this is actually, if you're like, when will I use this? Right? Uh, I've used this to find my way out of uh, being lost in the snow. It sounds like a crazy story. It is. So this is um, a really bad picture of Lass Lassen National Park. Has anybody ever been to Lassen? Yeah, OK, come on. Good. Lassen is really, really big. It's like as big as Yosemite. It's huge. Uh, big mountains. They have lakes everywhere. These are like cinder cones. So there's like old volcanic uh, activity that happens. So there's like the cinder cone. Perfect cinder cones out here. So we actually were hiking. It was a really big snow season, and it was in June. And we were hiking, and the snow was so high, you couldn't see the trail. You couldn't see the markers on the trees, which they put in the trees. When it's snowy, you can then follow the markers from tree to tree. It's line of sight to the next marker. But the snow was so high, it was above the markers that are like 12 feet off the ground. So we're walking around, uh, trying to find our way. We kind of knew by the terrain. And this was actually a training trip for uh, trip leaders because I used to lead backpacking trips. So we ended up, it was getting to be evening. We just made our camp right here. And the next day, it was my turn and I forgot the woman's name, but we were both the leaders for that next day. Okay, so what we did is we got up really early. We hiked to the tallest hill that was around us. And from there, we could see the whole terrain. We could see Mount Lassen in the distance. We could see, see this lake. Uh, there was like a river we could see. And I want you to think about this. If I'm right here and north is straight up and south, straight down, it spells we from left to right. Okay, we, north, south. How, what do you think I would do? How could I find my way? We had to get over towards Snag Lake. How could I find my way to Snag Lake with that information given? Tell your neighbor, what do you think I'd have to do? Because you could see it from the hill, right? You go down the hill and it's just forest. You can't see what's ahead. So how will I keep my direction? Tell your neighbors. What do you think? Hmm. All right, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. All right, if you have any scouting or backpacking experience, I'll have you hold off. But anybody that hasn't done any of this, never thought about it, what would you guys think? How would I know how to get to where I want to go? Say if I want to go to Snack Lake. How would I know how to get there? Any ideas? It could be wrong. Wrong ideas or show that you're bold. Yeah. Maybe you could take a picture. Take a picture. It, okay. And then maybe mark some differences. Okay. okay, so use my map and look at the picture or like make a mental image even on the map mark things like I need to go, you know, right of this river to make it or something like that. Landmarks. Okay, we can use landmarks. What else could we do with all the tools we have? Remember, I have this in my pocket. Okay, the, get, my, uh, get my phone out. Hope it has uh, directions and put directions and it would say walk forward. No? Evelyn, what do you think? Okay, good. And what you said is actually completely true, and I want to refine some of the language with it. So, here I am right here. What is due north of me? Due north? What's straight north of me? Mount Lassen. Okay, so look. We have Mount Lassen over here. I know that Mount Lassen is due north. This is actually, I'm not going to go into the super depth of this, but we did something called triangulating to find where we are. Because if I know this is straight ahead due north, and I can see Snag Lake, and it's at this angle. Next year, when you guys learn trigonometry, you'll be able to figure out from the angles, from a point, you figure out where you are. 
That's coming up. But what I basically did was the red on this, the red dial will always face towards what? North. It always face towards north. So this little thing spins. The reason why this spins is if I knew, um, actually, this is north this way. Let's see. North is approximately like the straight as this wall. Okay. So uh, if I'm against the wall, it's facing straight. The wall is basically pointing towards north. Okay. So that's north, right? If I needed to go in this direction, though, I would turn. I would turn uh, towards where I want to go, and I would keep. You can't see it because if I put it up, it changes it. But you would keep the arrow facing towards north, and I would just keep walking this way, and that's always north. That's always north. If I needed to go directly east, I would turn this so that north was facing directly to the left, so I know I'm going east. I would keep the red in that north orientation, and then I would just follow this. They're like, how can you follow a straight line? The way you follow a straight line is you look and you say, okay, the tree across the street is due east, so I'm going to walk straight towards the tree, and I'm going to take another measure. Question, yes? So you're changing where north is? You rotate. You're, the, the arrow will always face towards north. All right, guys, stop back there. The arrow will always face towards north. So what I do, I want to walk in the straight direction is this arrow. So I'll turn it. Oh, come on. I turn it so that the north is still aligned with the arrow, right? And that's going to always keep that north. So now I just need to walk straight, and then I can find the angle that I want to walk in. It's a little complicated, but I think I could teach all of you this, okay? So I'll have like a little obstacle course, you know, out in the, out in the, uh, in the grass or maybe on the field if it's wet, or the uh, blacktop, uh, where it'll be, you know, start at this basketball hoop, walk uh, due east, 10 steps. You do that, you take another measurement, another direction. That would be like the end of this whole unit. We'll learn how to do that. But what we did was, I kept this bearing. You know, basically, I'll draw it out, what I was showing you. Uh, here's my compass. Right? Here's the little dial. It's always going to face, the little dial is always going to face towards north. So on my, on my uh, compass, you see how it has a north there that I can turn? You guys see me turning that? Okay. So you have to turn it the angle that you want to walk on. Because I want to walk at this angle. So as long as I walk and the arrow is still facing towards the turn that I gave it, I'm going to walk in the same direction. Okay. If you got about half of that, you're in good space. If you got all of that, it's awesome. You get like how this all works. But we walked here, you know, that I basically say, okay, I know this is the direction I want to go. Here's a tree. I'm going to walk to the tree. Okay, that's great. Then I'm going to walk, there's like some bushes right here, I'm going to walk towards the bushes. I keep that bearing, you take your bearing over and over and over, and eventually, yeah, when we got right here, once we saw the lake, man, it was like, at that point in my life, it was like the greatest thing I'd ever done. I like lead pe led people out of the snow. It was only like 20-something. You're like, that's not even anything, Mr. Pasillas, who cares? <laughs> we were lost in the snow, it was cold. Anyhow, I'm going to teach you guys how to do this. Um, it may save your life sometime. And, uh, and then with a map and a compass, you can make your way anywhere. It actually is kind of wild how, how you can do that. Yeah? No okay. problem. All right, here we go. Breakdown of key terms. Some of it is really quick. Raise your hand. Or uh, How do you guys feel about a point? That it's... X and Y, no dimensions, that's important, no dimensions, it's just a point, it's just somewhere, okay? So if we were to zoom in, if you zoomed in on your phone, on this point, it would what? It'd become bigger and bigger, it'd become a circle. Mm -hmm. But a point actually has no area, it's just infinitesimal, it's just right there. It's just denoting a location, a somewhere, the point is a somewhere, okay? A line, you guys know, it requires two points to define it. And the symbol is just A, B with the two arrows. So tell me, what is the difference between this, a line, a ray, and a line segment? Who sees something different? Jude, what do you see? The ray has one arrow, mm -hmm. and the line segment has none. Has none. Because the line segment is what? It's just between two points. A ray has an end point, and it goes in one direction. And a line goes in both directions forever. So the notation is just based on that. Okay. Now, 
an angle, we have the vertex in the middle, and that's important when we do this, when we do our uh, labeling of angle A, B, C. B is in the middle, right? Because it is the vertex where the two rays meet. So we'll go A, B, C. Tell your neighbor what is an equivalent name for this exact same angle. What is the equivalent name as far as I label this angle A, B, C? What else could you say? It's angle what? Tell your neighbor what do you think? I'm going to call it something random. All right, let's go. Uh, Nick, what do you think? Say again? CBA. Angle CBA. That is the exact same thing. Because look, C. B, A, or A, B, C, as long as the vertex is in the middle, those other points can be interchanged. Right. There's some basics like that that I have to tell you. Um, let's look at this. All right. Have you guys seen these three angles before, the three types of angles? Seen that in eighth grade? Okay. So we have a right angle, 90 degrees. All like buildings are basically made at 90 degrees. All the corners are going to be 90 degrees. About. Uh, acute. What's a way we can remember this? Less than. I think of it as like a cute little baby or something like that. It's a cute little baby, so it's smaller. Maybe. Some babies aren't cute, I guess. Hey. What? Less than 90 degrees. That's a less than 90 Good. And obtuse is greater than 90. Okay, it's all in relation to the right angle. Um, let's see. Parallel lines. Never intersect. We put these little marks here to show that those two are parallel. We can make the symbols like this. Line L is parallel to line N. Okay. It's always cursive when you see these. The line is defined by a whole letter there. All right. Parallel lines have the same slope. What is another way that you could find if two things are parallel to each other? So how do I know that that back wall that back wall with the windows and this front wall with the whiteboards, how do I know that they are parallel to each other? They touch. They never touch. What is another way? You're on the right track. They never intersect. The same angles are in the corners. You can conclude that. Same slope. What else? Uh, it'd be hard actually if you get this. All right, how about this? If I start at this wall, and I do my heel to the wall, and I do steps toe to heel. Say if it's 43 steps, this one right here. Then I go all the way this side of the room, I do the same thing. How many toe to heels is it going to be to get to that side? 43. Why? Because lines are what? Equal distance away from each other at every single point along the line. That's another thing. I want you to write it here. Equal distance. This is a, um, one of the proofs for parallel lines. If two lines are equal distance from each other, they're parallel. Right? So these are where you could do proofs around this. If uh, somebody said, how do you know they're parallel? What could you measure? Measure the slope of one line, slope of the other line. That'd be one way to prove it. If you didn't have any information for slopes, you could look and see, well, I can figure out if they're equal distance from each other. Okay. All right, you guys are keeping up with this perfectly. This is going to be more like a game uh, coming up. Perpendicular upside down T means they meet at 90 degrees, 90 degrees, and we write it this way. Line segment AB is perpendicular to line segment CD. And can I classify this line segment AB as also this? What do you think? Can I say it's also line AB? Hmm. Tell your neighbor, what do you think? Does that make sense? Can I call line segment AB also, can I call it line AB instead of line segment? What do you think? Okay. This one isn't totally fair because it could like go either way. It could be like a rule you don't know about. So either guess is fine for this, but it is true. Every line contains a line segment. A line segment is just two endpoints between uh, two points, or a line between two endpoints. But 
a line has to be defined by two points on the line, so this is also line AB. Okay, it's a little ambiguous. A little ambiguous. Um, all right, lastly, circles form with the radius from the center. So if you get a center, right, and what I want to do eventually with this is, you guys know what crop circles are? Crop circles? Okay, if you don't, uh, there's a lot of them in England. They found there was actually a person. <laughs> and the person making, or some of them definitely were made by people. Can't say all of them, I guess. But they found that if you had a stake in the middle of a field and you got string, you can make a crop circle. Because what would I need to do if I put a stake in the ground right here? How would I make a circle around there? How would I make a circle with a radius of 50 feet? What would I need to make it? You're like, well, just try to eyeball it. No, you would be able to make it perfect with this method. What would you do? Okay. Like, pull the strings where it's taut and then walk around. If this is 50 feet, perfect. And I walk around this way, what's going to happen? Here's my stake. If I wrap it around, what's happening here? It's going to make a circle. Okay. So what the people in England did is they got like a, a, a piece of board that was like this thick, right? They put strings, like holes on the end so they could like step on it. So they'd hold the strings and step on it and just push down the, 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 the grass or the wheat or whatever they were pushing down. And they would make their lines like that. Okay. It's all measured. Anything you can make on paper with graph paper, you would be able to reproduce on a larger scale. Uh, you can make a crop circle. Okay, so I'm thinking at the end of this unit, which we have a lot of time to play around in, um, we'll do something on the field, maybe make some crop circles or something like that. Okay, let's see how that goes. Let's see how we do with this. Um, so a radius, they're all the same because they're all the same distance. You know, that's 50. That's 50. That's 50. And when there's more than one radius, we call it ray B I. Because when it ends in US and it's a plural, we change it to I. Like hippopotamus, hippopotami, right? Same with radius. We're going to say radii when there's more than one. All radii in a circle are the same. Phew. All right. Yes? Um, can you show me circular arcs to parallel? Hmm. Um, no. Only. Only lines can be parallel. It is something slightly different where it's in the terms of a transformation, which we'll hit in like a month. A transformation says if you have this and you just move the whole thing down, right? You'll have something else that's the same shape, just moved. Now, these are equal distance, but the word parallel is defined as uh, having to do with lines because it involves slope and involves other proofs for being parallel. So you would just be, that's like a trans, uh, translated, a translated shape, uh, what you're defining there. Okay. But it is like synonymous, analogous for that. All right, this is the game right here. Let's see, we have six teams. We're going to have six teams up here. And I'll just do it just like, uh, just like this class is set up. So here, 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 back, middle back. So I'm going to ask you a question. You have to talk with your neighbor, and then we're going to see who can who can figure out um, all the options you can find up here. Okay? So I'll give a point for each. All right. Your first thing you have to find is, uh, let's see, find a line segment. That's a loud dog. It's like in the hallway. All right, talk amongst yourselves. Where do I see a line segment? Line segment. All right, and then to make it fair, I'm going to roll to see who gets to who gets to go because we're going to run out of options. All right, you have one more second. All right, time. And then I'm going to roll. Let's see who goes. What? Uh, number two. So front center. What do you guys say? We'll name it off. Line segment. Line segment CH. Yes, that is a line segment. 
right, let's see who's next. All right, five. Five is center back. Give me another. Give oh, me another. Uh, line KB. Line, line segment. segment KB. Good. Line segment KB. Perfect. All right, last uh, last one. Three. Front, left. What do you guys have? Line segment AB. Okay. Let's just try to get used to saying it all together because that could be a ray or a line too. Okay. Uh, okay, good, good, good. Let's go. Give me two parallel lines. Two parallel lines. You have to kind of deduce this. You got to think about how you know if they're parallel. Line segment. Line segment. Line segment. All right, three more seconds. All right, let's see who goes first. That's not a good roll. There it is. Uh, four. Back right, what's a parallel line? Uh, line KD and EG. Line KD with line EG. And how did you reason that? Actually, I'll give you the point of asking someone else. How did they reason that out? Raise your hand if your group knows how they reasoned that out. How did you know? You're correct. How did you know that this line and this line were parallel? Uh, yeah, how did you know that though? Because line segment is B and F. But there's no other line. Like it, this would be true if you have another line segment and you have these tick marks showing that they're the same. So we don't quite know, but I'm going to let your partner, Caden, uh, figure out the second part. Caden, why don't you back that up? What else do you have? That's uh, they make oh. 90 degree angles? 90 degree angles, right? Aren't the angles in a, a square room 90 degrees everywhere? Rectangle room, 90 degrees. Okay, so if this is one wall of the classroom, then there's another. They meet at 90. And then if I go the opposite wall, there's another 90. Then you know that these two have to be parallel. And we'll put our parallel line marks there for that. Go ahead and put those lines there. That was good. Let's see, we're going to go one more point for three. All right. Next, 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 next. Um, how about this? Name a radius. Name a radius. Name a radius. All right, you got five seconds. Have more than one ready just in case you're called on second. All right, five. Uh, uh, one and six haven't gone. That's how, that's how it rolls. All right, center back. Give me a radius. Uh, radius HI. HI. Perfect, perfect. All right, let's go with group six. What do you guys have? CH. Perfect. Radius. Oh, wait. Um, did I give you one already? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're good. All right, last group. Actually, I'm going to call on group one because I want to make it interesting. What's another radius? HL. HL. That's the other radius. Are they all the same distance? They're all the same length? Right? The radius is always, they're all, all radii are the same. So watch, I'm going to make these marks. This is what you do, these are called tick marks. Tick marks. Da, da, da. That shows that all those lines are the same. Okay. You guys seen that before? Okay, a little bit. Good. Uh, what? All right, the next thing for you is, I want you to find an acute angle. Make sure you name it right, an acute angle. And we're going to start with, All right, rolling for the group. Let's see what we have. Four. Okay, back right. What do you guys say? Let's name it 
angle. No, acute angle ABC. Good, good. Uh, this one right here, K, vertex B, C. What's the alternate name for that? C, B, K. Good, 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 good. You got one? Um, I'll take it. Go for it. Now, I have a question. Okay. What's the what's the significance of the B vertex? The B vertex, um, that was just in this scenario. The B just happened to be labeled it. If I had these two lines, and this was, you know, X, Y, Z, B, or uh, Q, and P, this would be X, Y, Z. This would be Z, Y, whatever letter that was. Um, so, so it doesn't always have to be P? No, never. That's not a rule. It depends on what points are around it. So who has another angle? Let's just take it. Yeah, Jack. L, H, I. Angle, I like how you said that. Angle, L, H, I. Perfect. Alternate name? I, H, L. Good. So we're going to go with six. Uh, just throw your hands up. I'll give it. Give me one. A, B, C. Angle, A, B, D. Angle, A, B, D. Perfect. I thought you were going to do it together. Yeah. Uh, back here, another. Uh, someone hasn't gone from their group. Any other stuff? Or who hasn't? A group that hasn't gone? No one else has one? Okay. I see a couple others. Watch. Angle L, H, C. And it's easier to see angles. It's easier to see angles. This one's important. This one's important. It's easier to see angles that are small, but this is also an angle. I, H, C. That is also an angle. Okay? What? Oh, uh, those are obtuse. You're right. Uh, I should have brought that up in obtuse. Uh, wrong place to bring it up, but I just want to clarify that. that that's also an angle. Okay. Thank you. You're right. All right. Give me a. How about? Uh, let's go with a ray. Give me a ray. Give me a ray. All right. We'll wrap this up pretty quick in like a minute or two. All right. And then let's just say uh, Loretta. Give me a ray. 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 Do I have to say line segment? Or You'll say one of the points has to be an end point, and the other one has to be okay. uh, in the direction. Ray EG. Ray EG. Perfect. End point continues through this point. So we got Ray EG. Who has another ray? Uh, let's see. Evelyn. Ray DF. Ray D. End point going towards F. Perfect. Who else has one? Jude. Ray BK. Ray, B, K, in point, still going. Now you may say, wait a minute, this is part of a line. It's part of a line. But if you define it, that this is the end point for this ray, a ray is always part of a line. A line segment is always part of a line, but not the other way around. All right, uh, Izzy, what do you think? A ray, D, F. D, F. That was said, so give me another one real quick from D. E, J. E, J. E, J. Okay. Uh, Ray B J. B J. Perfect. Jackie. Right. It would count if we had this. If it was a line that continued. It ends right here at the center of the circle. So this would be a line segment. Are we got all the rays? Uh, let's see, last one. Give me lines that are perpendicular. Tell your neighbor, last one, last one, so get involved. Ask your neighbor what they think, tell them what they should think. All right, so you guys see a bunch of them, right? See a bunch of them. All right, raise your hand if you know one uh, set that, or parallel lines, parallel, sorry, perpendicular lines. Who has one? 
So we have this ray, df, perpendicular to this, well, ray, really, eg. It's perfect. It's perfect. I've lost track of the score. Anyone else have ones? Who else? OK, I mean, the only one, other ones I see, so we have this ray and this ray. You could have this ray and that ray, OK? Those are the only two that I see here. You can't assume, never, ever assume with geometry that, well, this looked, this looked 90, like 90 degrees. You can't assume that. On the test, if you're like, how'd you know it was 90 degrees? You said, well, it looked like 90 degrees. Right? Things aren't always drawn to scale. You can never, ever count on how it looks. It would have to be labeled, okay? Or you'd have to be able to deduce it from something else. Study. Give me a heads up. Thumbs up, sideways down. Yeah, you got it. All right, let's get going on.